Hi guys, welcome to the video. Hey guys, this is Shannon with Black Sheep House. In today's video, we're making over these secondhand IKEA Rast nightstands. You can buy yours brand new for $40 at your local IKEA. I, of course, found mine thrifting and they've definitely seen better days. This is the perfect project for this finish that I've been working on. You guys know that I spent like two weeks trying to figure out the Pottery Barn dupe finish and love that one. There's lots of videos of these types of finishes on my channel. It's kind of my go-to and it has just made refinishing furniture so much easier because you can create the same look every single time. Whereas when you're stripping raw wood and you're staining wood every single type of wood and age of wood alters the appearance slightly. So it is hard to get a cohesive look in your house by just staining and using whitewashes and taupe washes and things like that. So I really like this painted option. It's also a very textured surface. So if you have a piece that has some damage or like this piece, when I bought it, it was painted at the second hand store and it needs texture to hide some of the, the poor paint job and the, the more texture the better honestly for this finish I just love it like I said it's my go-to I love how it looks in a home and I can just use a little bit of these types of finishes in every single room and everything just looks cohesive so you guys know we're moving into our new place super excited and I've been doing like mood boards and planning I'm going to be doing a lot a lot of redecorating and making over spaces and things like that and I put these two chests to the side and was planning on using them for our master bedroom they're gonna just oh they're gonna look so good <laughs> really really excited and the finish is very beginner friendly very easy anybody could do this so if you're new just keep watching if, and if you've been doing things for a while then great this will be a fun video to watch as well um many of you guys i know do the pottery barn finish now and it's just a great one to have if whether you are fixing up your own home or you sell furniture it's my number one fastest selling finish all right so the package came woohoo it's got my hardware in it i'm pretty sure let's see Oh yes, this hardware is very large. It is, I wanted to like really upgrade the hardware. I spent about $50 on hardware, maybe 40. Oh yeah, and one of you guys, Rebecca Ackroyd recommended this supplement called True Focus because I was complaining about my ADD last time and she said, a lot of you guys said L-tyrosine was something that was very helpful to your ADD and so I'm gonna be trying that supplement. But this is the hardware, so pretty. So pretty. I think, um, you know, when you have a piece like an Ikea piece, it was built for, you know, a good time, not a long time. <laughs> no, this is, they are solid pine. You know, that's like the weakest type of wood. It's not very strong. But I do think that as, you know, nightstands go, that these will look high end by the time we're done. It's just the construction of Ikea is very utilitarian a lot of times. And so there aren't going to be like the extra details that really make a piece look more sophisticated and so I thought okay with as cheap as these Ikea nightstands were I paid eight dollars for mine at the thrift store but you, you know uh, I, I could spring for the more expensive hardware and so I did and super glad that I did I don't know if by the time I get my room styled if I'm going to stay with gold or if I'm going to go black with the hardware but you guys let me know what you would do in the comments um but I do, I like both black and gold hardware. My tall dresser is has black handles that's going to be in the room, I think. Again, I don't know where everything's going to go. It's going to take some getting used to and getting in there and getting a feel for it. I'm using some wood filler and filling the holes. I like to drill my holes before I fill the wood because... Um, or bef before I fill the holes because I can use the existing holes as a reference point for drilling my new holes because generally I'll keep them on the same plane. Then I'm going to prime this dresser because it was, you know, covered in 
marker and crayon and all sorts of stuff. We scrubbed and scrubbed and scrubbed, but you know, a primer I think is going to be necessary here. These um, little nightstands were, you know, well loved. <laughs> and if you have brand new IKEA RAS nightstands that you're doing, you will need to prime as well because raw wood just absorbs things so quickly and you just you need to prime it or it's some of the knots might bleed through and you might have some issues so a good primer like kills or whatever you find locally um, zinzer one two three any of those primers is great So like I've done many times, I created a little bit of a sample board to try out the different looks that I was going for on. And it's so nice because you can see I put the hardware up against it and I can see if I like the lighter one, the darker one, the one with more texture or less texture. You can really play around with a board this size and do, you know, four or five different looks on it. And that's what I always recommend you guys try and do. You can also take the paint chips, like what I'm showing here, and you can try the technique that you're doing just right over top of the paint chip. And that's how I get colors, color combinations that I'm going for a lot of times is just take a bunch of paint chips that you think might be the base and then go from there. So many of you guys have messaged asking how I would create a specific look for our house or you know, Pottery Barn or whatever. And, and I've created a lot of different looks. And the way that I create specific looks is just get those paint chips and try a couple of glazes on top of them or paints. Now, this is a really cool project today because I'm actually making a glaze out of clear coat and paint. This is going to act just like a glaze. It'll dry a little bit quicker than a glaze, but it'll have that runny texture that you need to do the brushing technique that's going to give us that wood look, that earthy, textured, organic feel for the nightstands that we're going for. So I just mix half and half, half paint and half clear coat. I am using a satin paint and a flat matte clear coat. And that's just what I personally wanted to go for. But you could go for something with a little bit more sheen to it if you'd like to. Combining the paint and the top coat not only gives me a durable finish that I won't need to top coat at the end, but it also thins the paint enough that I can do the brushing technique and it won't clump up on me. I'm also going to be working in a cool environment because it's cold outside and that's easy for me to do but you definitely don't want to do this technique in the sun or someplace really hot where the, your paint and your clear coat are going to dry up on you really quickly so you might need to uh, find a place that's nice and cool like a garage or something or you can add an extender to your paint like Floatrol or General Finishes makes an extender as well that'll keep your paint from drying up too quickly then I just mix this together Again, it's just half paint and half clear coat. I know in the video it might look like there was more of one than the other. And it, it, trust me, it's half and half is the recipe. And the um, technique is really simple. We're just going to paint this on just like I would a glaze. And then we'll do the brush technique. And it's just like that. You got your finish. It's a really cool technique. I um, had never seen anybody do anything like this. And I was running into, with my business, I was running into all these pieces that had so much damage. And so I just was like racking my brain trying to figure out what can I do to refinish furniture, but you know, like not have to make it smooth as glass every time, you know? And um, I figured out this finish and it's just really been such a game changer for me and it's really... Uh, been the reason why I think I've been able to make money selling furniture and you know not having to spend 
it's it's working smarter and not harder it's it's a combination of some pieces really do deserve the time and effort and some pieces are just cheaper pieces and they just don't deserve to be stripped down or they're made of particle board and it, there's just a million different types of furnitures out there and not all of them deserve a pristine makeover <laughs> and I just my main thing is I just want something to, that looks beautiful at the end and I think that that's what most of my clients want as well as they just want a piece of furniture that looks beautiful in their home and this finish um, and these types of finishes where I do the brushing technique do that for me so uh, many people are, you know, <laughs> furniture refinishers and starting to do this and it really helps your business. And so it's such a great um, trick to have up your sleeve. And then also for the person who's fixing up their home and you don't want to strip every single piece down to raw wood or you're dealing with particle board or a cheaper piece like this Ikea. Even if I, if I stripped all the paint off and stained it, I would still be dealing with like knots and maybe I don't want that rustic of a look in my home, you know? So this just gives you so many more options and, and really gives you a lot of color options as well. You could do any color your heart desires. You could do purple and yellow in this technique. You could do whatever you want. I tend to stick with the neutral stuff as you guys have seen. <laughs> Um, and then also in my sample board that I made, I think I brushed it on a little thinner than I did when I was actually doing this dresser, or maybe it just absorbed a little more, I don't know, but it ended up with a little bit darker finish than my sample board. So that's something to keep in mind. Maybe just with the larger surface, I ended up brushing it fewer times, but the more times that you brush it, the lighter the finish is going to come out. So, and also the more product that you put on there is going to make the finish darker as well if you find that you mess up and you just don't like the way that it looks you can just paint over the whole thing with the base color and start over it's not a big deal you can also play around with dry brushing to try to smooth some spots out and things like that and I may even do a dry brushing or a whitewash over the entire dressers uh, or little nightstands when I get them into the new place and if they're not light enough for my bedding. You guys, I'm so excited about the new place. It's still going to be a rental. We have to rent for another year before we can buy something, but it's going to have a lot more like updated um, features to it and wall color. So I think I'll actually be able to do some home decor, like renter friendly home decor versus um, where we are right now, I really don't have any freedom like that. And the walls are yellow and it just be really difficult for me to try to decorate. So I hope to bring you guys some more like home decorating content as I redo and do like room makeovers, um, in this new place <laughs> and we'll only be there for a year. So like I'll be do it, then it'll, uh, it'll all start over again when we move again. So I'll just, hopefully I'll have tons and tons of content. <laughs> to bring you guys um, as I make things over and I might start to add in like some vlog style type videos where I you know do some dinner ideas and just like home stuff I don't know if I should start a whole separate channel for that like just a vlogging channel where it's more home related shopping you know grocery shopping and um makeovers and thrifting and all that stuff on one channel and then I should just keep this one strictly furniture I don't know <laughs> you guys let me know in the comments what you would be interested in seeing I obviously this is a furniture refinishing channel uh that's like all I do on this channel but I don't know if I should bring in some different content or if I should create a separate space for that Anyway, so you just brush this on and then you do your brushing technique. If you've been, you know, a black sheep for a while, you know that I tend to use a whisk broom from Lowe's or Home Depot. It's like the small handheld natural fiber, like straw broom. And I feel like that gives me a more like unique and textured surface. I do prefer that, but like I said, we're moving and everything is so crazy. I just used my daughter's, don't tell her, I used my daughter's little play broom <laughs> and did that and it worked fine 
for the finish. And, and in fact, it it worked just I almost just as good, I think. So if you're in a pinch, you can use whatever. And I think somebody in the comments said that they used a dollar store brush and a little dollar store broom and it worked great for this finish as well. One thing I will mention is that you'd probably do yourself a favor by taking the drawers out and doing this. I just did it while it was in because it's easier to film and you guys were to see the technique that I'm doing. Um, but it would probably be easier to take the drawers out. I will say that on the sides, like where it's all white right now and, and surrounding the dresser, I am going to do the brushing technique pretty much sideways on any area that I can touch. Okay. So sideways on the sides, meaning horizontal is, is the direction I'm going with the broom. See me go like sideways. Anytime there's a little area that I can brush, I tend to go sideways with it. Now, I've tried it the other way and I have examined like the Pottery Barn and the Crate and Barrel finishes and they do sometimes go sideways on the uh, vertical. They do vertical stripes on the sides of their pieces. But I feel like mine look more high end with the finished product if I go horizontal so that is just what I do parallel with the floor I just just like the front it's almost like the whole thing is being wrapped <laughs> with this stuff and then on the tops I go you know from long end to long end versus doing like short to short so that's just what I do and including like these little sides and the little sides of the drawers everything I always do the lip of the drawer all the way around and um, I don't really do the like sides of the drawers you know a lot of furniture finishers will do like fancy little decor and painted cutesy things on the sides of dresser drawers and I always admire their passion <laughs> for that but I'm way too lazy and in way too much of a hurry to add that kind of detail but I do the lip and I brush it just like I brush the rest of the piece now like I mentioned earlier we're not going to put a clear coat on these nightstands because we mixed in the clear coat with the finish. And the finish, that particular paint, is actually really durable. So we've got two things going for us, and I just don't think that a top coat is going to be necessary. So here I am drilling into the back of these nightstands because I wanted to have a spot to charge my phone next to the bed. I'm actually going to do it on both of the nightstands. And then I had this paper. I actually got it at the thrift store. It's Ballard's Gift Wrap and it's really beautiful. I looked on their website to see if they sell other types of gift wrap. I couldn't find any. Anyway, I threw that in the top drawer. So here, let's take a look at these guys before... Oh man, they were crusty, dusty, ready to get a makeover. And here is the finished product. What do you guys think? 
Should I go with black candles or stay with the gold? Should I do a whitewash or stick with the color I have? I'm really excited to put these in the new place. Really happy with this uh, makeover. I think that we took Ikea furniture and really made it luxe as it, it just, it's gonna go perfectly with that whole vibe of the bedroom. Nice storage, really nice texture. These just look like Pottery Barn to me. So I'm really happy with it. I hope that you guys give it a try or try your own version of this technique. And I'm grateful for each and every one of you guys for watching this video, especially up until the end. Oh yeah, I did a little mood board there. That's kind of what I'm going for in my bedroom. This is from How Home on Harbor, their Instagram. I really like her stuff. And I <laughs> have to show you guys a hack here. I, this is a candlestick inside a glass. <laughs> container so there you go you guys if you don't have an outlet near and you want to make it look like you have a lamp <laughs> or you don't want plugs showing at all when you're staging furniture which is my case and uh, here you go you can just throw something like that in there I just wanted to see what it looked like with the like glass on top and I'm in love I think it's such a great project I'll see you guys in the next video bye <music>